Guys? Uh. What just happened? Let's let's fix ourselves up real quick. Let's cool. Welcome to a spoiler review discussion of Spider-Man No Way Home. Before anything, spoiler warning. Spoilers here, spoilers there, spoilers right over there. We're all going to be talking spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie, go watch it now. Second thing on the agenda. This is get my, if this if this for some reason gets hit because our, our let there be carnage one got hit with a copyright strike for no reason from a random um a random company that didn't own it i have tried to appeal it and nothing uh so it's not youtube i got hit with the copyright strike it'll be taken away in january but let's let's hope this one doesn't happen again like this one doesn't get hit again third thing you've been warned of spoilers we're all just going to say right now Rest in peace, Aunt May. Yes. Rest, rest in, in peace. Rest in peace, Aunt May. Now I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know how true that was, or like how true these things are that I'm about to say. But apparently, the actress—I can't remember her name for the life of me—she um, was saying that people didn't care about her character in the Spider-Man movies or in this movie, and. When she's when I saw that apparently she said that I was like, well, first, first, just in the trailer, and since we had been seeing so little of her in other movies, I knew something was going to happen to her. I didn't. Yeah. We didn't do reactions and stuff. Like I don't really do reactions to trailers that much anymore. I do just reactions to like fan films and full things. Um, but I did a reaction or a discussion or a theory thing. Maybe we should start doing those things. What do you guys think? Like after a trailer comes out, kind of theorize about what'll happen in a movie or something. What do you guys think? I'd be down for it. Anyway, yeah, down for a couple of them, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so I had a feeling something was going to happen to Aunt May. Um and she's gone. The goblin killed her. We'll get we'll get back into that in a little bit, but fourth announcement. The end of this month starts another long series of discussions and reviews because the book of Boba Fett is coming out. Now, Along I want so many other things. Yes, with yeah. so many other things coming out. Um, so that, with that, we'll be doing the Book of Boba Fett maybe a day after um, the episode comes out. Uh, but yeah, uh, we were going to do, well, I, I was thinking that we should have done Hawkeye, but I didn't get into it until like these last couple episodes. And I'm really, I feel like we really missed out because it was, it was, it's really good. It's really good. Um, there will be spoilers for Hawkeye if you haven't seen it in this, and uh, you two haven't seen it, so it's going to happen. Anyway, I think I've taken enough time doing an intro, so let's get right into it. Um, the first note I have, because I, no- no- my- I got my notes here. Overall, um, what was everybody's thoughts on the plot up to Doc Ock's return? What did everybody think about how they handled him being outed as Spider-Man and how they handled um, everything up until that point, him wanting to go back and tamper with stuff. What did you guys think? Uh, we'll have Forrest go first. Um, It sounds about right. Cause I mean, it did happen in the civil war arc in the comic books. Peter reveals himself. And well, I mean, I, I mean, just what did you think about yeah. it? I felt they handled pretty well. Pretty well. Um, like were there things really you disliked? Change, what? What? I really wouldn't change too much of it. Mm. To be perfectly honest, I felt it was just fine the way it was. It led up to the. Uh, it was a good build up to where everyone else, <clears throat> or essentially the multiverse crashed. Mm-hmm. Um. Um. Brady. Uh, personally, for me, I, I liked it. Um, I really, really liked it. Uh, from his reveal, and then he even says like. You know, the best day of my life is the day that you found out talking to MJ. So he's okay with that. But as soon as the whole world found out, and of course, like everything in this world, there's two sides to every story. You have the people that believe what happened with Mysterio versus what happened from Peter's side. And you have the people Mm -hmm. that support him versus the people that are against him. And that that continuity with that and that that confliction 
that happens with all that. I really liked it. I thought it was awesome. And the when it leads up to everything, all the way up to Doctor Strange and the spell and everything, that's what happens, right? We all want something, and then all of a sudden we want to tweak it here and there. And I liked how that was like it was a very mm-hmm. normal thing to be like, oh wait, what about? Uh, no, uh, I kind of want to do this, this, and differently. And he was changing his mind, and that's what screwed everything up. So indecisiveness and like what Doctor Strange said, trying to live two separate lives. Exactly. Yeah. Um, for me, there was, I think the plot, the weird side plot of, uh, Flash suddenly wanting to be his best friend and writing the book. I thought that was just really unnecessary. It only, the only payoff there was, it was Peter finding out where the MIT lady was. That was literally the only reason that they did that. And I thought that was stupid too. Like what? They could have done was have any other character except for Flash. I think I feel like they're just forcing. I think after the first movie, I can't remember who's. I think it was the first movie or the fourth, second movie, where Flash got knocked out and he just knocked out in a really dramatic way. That was the peak. That oh, was yeah. where, uh, that was the peak of Flash. They, we didn't need any more Flash after that. Um, I, he's just kind of annoying and boring to me. Um. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so also let's talk about uh, how they completely threw everybody off the scent in the trailer where Wong says, don't do the spell. Yeah. That was a completely, that, there. there's a big plot hole there that a lot of people are complaining about. The Doctor Strange is probably just like down on his luck now because he's no longer the Sorcerer Supreme, blah, 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 because of technicality. Um, But... I don't really care about that stuff. The thing that I do care about is just that they threw us off the scent so bad. Like mm-hmm. Forrest and I in the theater, or at least I looked over at Forrest. I was like, wait a second. That was different. That was yeah. crazy different. Cause Wong's like, just keep me out of it. You know, before and in the trailer, he's like, says something else. And I knew that's what they were doing. They were cutting. He says, don't do the spell. And then he walks through the portal. Yeah. Um, but that, that one to me was like the biggest glaring thing. And then also in my notes, Daredevil. Matt Murdock. Charlie Cox is here in yeah. the MCU. Um, what are you guys' thoughts on that? It was a really good introduction um, for me, at least, because I didn't watch the Netflix Daredevil series. Um, I want to go check it out now if it's still there. It is. But... Yeah, like I said, really good introduction for me, just how subtle it was with him catching the brick right before Peter could and just Oh, yeah, um, I'm a lawyer. He's like, Yeah, he's like, How how'd you do that? I'm a really good lawyer. And I was like, Oh What do you think, Brady? I was stoked. Um I you know, I watched the Marvel Daredevil um on Netflix and it, it was awesome. I freaking loved it. And when he showed up, I just lost it. Um, cause I just know that opened the door for some potential other things. And when he says, you know, you're really going to need a good lawyer. And then the brick comes through, catches it. And Peter's like, how'd you do that? And he's like, I'm a really good lawyer. Basically telling you, I'm the lawyer you need. Yeah. And, uh, it was just, I think the perfect amount of credit to be given and i was super stoked about it i was like i i lost it and a, a bunch of people when i was in the theater knew who he was had seen this show and were clapping and super stoked about it as well heck yeah so well actually that's another good point to cheering and applause and stuff like that that i want to get to later um because our theater it was it it wasn't it wasn't over the top i think it was a good amount um for forrest and i but we'll, we'll get to that in a second so obviously after all this Real what? quick about Daredevil. Um, in the trailer, it looked like he was in the interrogation room with Peter slamming the files on the desk. But uh, that well, yeah, that's what a lot of theories and people were saying. I knew it wasn't him because he's not going to, if you're a lawyer, you're not going to accuse the person that you're, you're not going to be hostile towards the person that you're defending. It right? didn't look like he was yelling at Peter. It looked like he was yelling at the cop in the trailer. It. I, I watched a lot of stuff on the, it didn't look anything like him. First of all, the, Daredevil doesn't have a freaking gut um so he and he's in he's in peak shape like there was just a watching it over and over through several different like channels and stuff like that there was nothing there that like made you think that it was at least for me made me think that it was daredevil but i 
But you're to each to each his own. Um, the next thing. So let's talk about Doc Ock's uh, intro back into it. Uh, Forrest, what was the first thing I said when he when when we saw the arms? Honestly, I don't remember because I was too busy geeking out. The freaking music, <laughs> dude. <laughs> the freaking Doc Ock music from Spider-Man yeah. 2. Oh my gosh, I got instant chills. Instant chills. Um, what did you think? Brady, what did what were your what was your reaction to it? Yeah. I, I loved it too. Like the music I picked up on that very quickly that they were using a lot of the old music um to reference characters from what show like movies they had come from. And was so, thought it was just super cool, and it just super cool to see the the arms come out of nowhere, and like how he was using them, and like the intro. I will admit, when it first happened, when he first was coming, and like all the bridge was busting up, I did not expect it to be him. For some reason, I was like, "What is busting up the road?" Like I know it's somebody, but who? And then when he came up, I was like, "Oh, there he is." He defoe. Uh, yeah, yeah. Forrest, what what did you think? Um, I didn't notice the music until Electro, but we'll get onto that. Freaking, I love how much smoother the mechanical arms look with the technology now, but there's still always that thing with practical effects over CGI. But honestly, I love how they redesigned him, sort of. Um, did they do the de-aging thing on him at all? Or, they, or no? they, they did. They, I think they did it more on, on Defoe, or it was easier with Defoe because he... he... Obviously, he just looks old in general. He's he's been sixty years old, um, yeah. but I I know they did it on Willem Dafoe, but or not Willem Dafoe on Alfred Molina. But to be honest, I didn't really notice it, and it didn't really take me out of it. No, I thought because in Spider Man Two, he was a chunky monkey, you no know, denying that. And and now I really honestly didn't notice him like looking different weight wise. To be- yeah, I, I think they, in Spider-Man 2, obviously a lot more of his scenes, he's shirtless. He just has the cummerbund on. Um, but they they he, like, they like covered him up pretty well. But still, like, obviously in some of the interviews and stuff, he's kind of got a, a neck going on. But that, again, was never a big thing because, like, no. I don't care about that stuff. Like, it just makes sense. Like, there was one person who had this crazy theory that if they're being pulled, because tech, if they're being pulled into another universe... They're being, it was something about they're being pulled from another universe and being aged. And so I was like, oh, okay, I could see that. I could, see. the one person that it threw me off on, we'll talk about in a little bit is Electro. Um, but we'll, we'll go back. Um, Doc Ock was amazing, but then the whole nanotech, I didn't catch up on this until, or pick up on this until I watched um, the scene where he gets his arms for the first time in Spider-Man 2. Doc Ock's already familiar with nanotech because in Spider-Man 2, he says nanowires go into his spine and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so he mentions nano something. So then he's like, oh, nanotech. So already knows what it is. Um, And then I, I, they hyped it up in the, or they they hyped it in the trailer a little bit and it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. They literally just did that so they could lock up his arms. (laughs) Essentially, yeah, because yeah. it looked like he was stealing the nanotech to beat to beef himself up. Yeah, but all it really—I'm pretty sure everyone Bluetooth. thought that too. Everyone's like, "Oh crap, this is just gonna make him on the next level." Exactly. Yeah. Um. So next, so I, and I'm not gonna go down each by plot each little thing, but they do. I do. <clears throat> what I did like about. The next little part is when uh, Peter goes after the other bad guys who've come in. He has the suit that he got from Doctor Strange. And the suit, what I like about it is that it wasn't him to be able to do a bunch of crazy magical stuff other than his webs sent them back to where they needed to be. Yeah, it was just a gauntlet. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. Um, And then how he lost the suit, too. Like, he didn't, like, it wasn't. Again, it's like this Iron Spider to me. He gets the Iron Spider. A lot of the stuff, and this comes to the... Uh, we'll talk about this more at the end of it, because with the conclusion of it, a lot of the stuff, like, Peter's suits have just been... Basically, he fights on autopilot. Like, his suits do everything for him. What made Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire so good is that 
their only real gadget was the web shooter, at least for Andrew. Yeah. Toby didn't have gadgets. And so that yeah. that's what I like. Like, it, Spider-Man is obviously Spider-Man, but he felt he, he feels grounded. With Tom Holland, like, what I noticed is he didn't even have Friday or Veronica or anybody. No, he just has the... He doesn't have an AI. I think it's Karen. Yeah, Karen. He didn't have Karen. He doesn't have. He didn't have an AI in this. Did he? No. He did. He did yeah, not. I kept saying it was offline or something. Yeah, he did not have an AI on this, which was nice. Okay. Um. But anyway, so I just it was cool to see that. Oh, his suit served a one-time purpose. That's cool. Then we'll get to the in, Now we're getting into the intro of Electro and Sandman. Mm-hmm. What did you guys think? Brady, you go first. Uh, personally, for me, I don't know why, but Sandman got me so hyped when he came out of nowhere and like, well, he hit Spider Man or something. I can't remember. No, but, he, yeah, he shielded Spider Man. Oh, that's right from Electro because Electro came out of nowhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Personally, seeing Sandman again hyped me up, and then you don't even need to see the actor; you hear his voice, and as soon as you hear his voice, you're like, "Oh, it's 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 the same actor and everything," and like the nostalgia of it just came flooding back from when I first saw it forever ago, <laughs> and it almost replayed in my mind, um, like the movie and like him when he falls into the the military testing thing and the collider, all, all yeah, all that stuff, and so that was super exciting for me. Uh, Electra was cool to see, and especially because like he had been that pure energy and just came out that same way back into the universe. And I was super stoked about that too. And I thought personally, he looked blue. Sandman's one of my favorite comic book villains. Um, I like how we kind of got to see him be more of the dark side of the Sandman rather than Spider-Man three is like, oh, I'm just doing this for my daughter. It's, he's kind of doing the same thing this one, but he was more dark about it. If that makes any sense, he was more mean about it. Um, with Electro, that's when I noticed the music that they were they're pulling music because you can recognize dubstep anywhere, especially Electro's theme. Mm-hmm. That won't, that was always one of my favorite parts of Sp- the Amazing Spider-Man Two. Um, I like the introductions of both of them because Sandman left on good terms with Toby, and it's like, hey, Peter, it's me. Uh, is there anything I can do to help, or what's going on here? I thought that was really nice. Yeah, touch yeah. back on to Spider-Man Three. Like it, it, that was for me. I was like, "Oh, you mean so well, but that's not the right guy." <laughs> you know, like it's <laughs> that, that's what I was thinking in the theater. Um, but uh, yeah. So with me, Electro. Just my overall thoughts on Electro, because we're actually next. We're gonna go down the line and just talk about what we thought of each each villain. Um, Electro to me, as messed up. No, no. I'm just gonna say he was too black. Like he was too black. Max Dillon, <laughs> when when he became Electro, how did that make him more black? He was just some nerdy dude. He was some nerdy dude. How did he get a fresh fade? How how did he? And I think what they what were going off of what you said for us when Electro just became pure energy, and then he just came back. He never actually died. Yeah. Um. So I get. I, I guess like. But if anything, he should come back with a bald head. You know, like he he. I don't like like I'm I'm glad that we get to see Jamie Foxx. I'm glad that we get to see him. I'm I'm, I'm completely happy with that. I just think it's like he Doctor Manhattan in The Watchmen, how he's a little skinny, lanky dude, got eviscerated and came back as the freaking god, pretty much. Well, and, and it's not. It's just like he came back and he was naked and he was he was uh, Jamie Fox. I'm like, okay, that's fine. It was a reskin. I get that. I'm fine with that. But I just hate how like. I guess the biggest thing I hated was the interaction with him and Andrew and I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll get back to that in a little bit. Um, but so that maybe that's because like after he gained his powers, he gained a ton of confidence and was just confident, like overly confident. I don't think being overly confident makes you act more black. No, No, I guess that's maybe another possibility is, um, when he came to, to, um, Holland's universe somehow has, he copied the, max that was already there or something i don't know i don't i don't know i just didn't jive with it i just i don't know but it it, it was i don't know they already had him acting a certain way as a character like yeah he's he changed after he became electro 
but he wasn't I don't know it just it really it just, it really just kind of I just didn't like it I didn't like it um Fair enough. so let's go into thoughts on the villains what did you guys think of lizard um, Forrest, go ahead. I I like the lizard I wish we saw a little bit more of him um but they did change him a lot from spider-man from amazing spider-man to no way home he has like a little like an mk11 the little ridges that baraka has on his head he had those yeah he looked kind of smaller but stockier um the amazing spider-man he was like eight foot tall i swear and this one he looked like he was barely taller than uh strange um i wish we could have seen the fight between him and strange maybe in, that'll be in a deleted scene or something i mm-hmm. uh, mean personally i would have liked to see that or just like see Strange like tracking him down, and then just fades to a, Tom Holland finding Electro and or looking for Electro and Sandman. I don't know. I just I just wish we saw more of the Lizard. Mm-hmm. What about you, Brady? Personally, I, I guess I didn't notice a lot of those appearance differences, but I was I thought he looked cool and good. Um, I agree. I wish I would have seen some kind of like fight between him and Strange, um, but later on when he comes into action he doesn't do a lot but you can i feel like you can always tell like throughout the movie that he's he's got a backup plan in his head or something he's counter planning to the whole plan Mm -hmm. he's just going with the flow until the opportune moment arises and he can enact his plan yeah um i kind of felt like he was a bench warmer i felt like he didn't really have any depth nothing he really said other than talking who did he did he say that through some big shade at Max? All the things that you were pointing out with the fade, the straightened teeth. Yeah, he was. He, he he's blue anymore. Him and Sandman, they spouted a lot of exposition. Um, Sandman obviously telling Otto that he dies, and that how Norman dies and stuff like that. Like that, they. I feel like they were. I'm going to cover both of them. You know how I feel about both of them. Um, I felt like they were just bench warmers. Um, I. Uh, I feel like I feel like Sandman was kind of eh because he didn't really he he didn't really like he was kind of confusing to me for the fact that he was all on their side he's like yeah I just want to get home let's just all get cured and stuff like that and then out of nowhere he just want he's like give me the box give me the box and it's like okay he can go home but it's like if they gave him motivation of, oh, well, you can go, like, if he knew that, oh, well, if I go home, I won't have these powers anymore, and I won't be able to do whatever I want to get the money I need for my kid. Um, so if they gave him that motivation, then they would have, that would have made more sense. But at the end, he's like, they're like, Flint, I, Flint, I'm trying to help you. He's like, I don't care. It's like, why are you so mad now? What are, maybe there's something on the cutting room floor between him and Max. Um but it just came out of really out of nowhere because after um, Peter shot the web at Electro, he's like, did you kill him? He's like, no, I didn't kill him. Like, no, like, hold on. And then after, when he actually goes back to the compound or back to the little prison, he sees Electro, so he should know Peter didn't kill him. And then obviously he, he he's on his side. But then once they all break out again, Peter, they, it made no sense why Flint wanted to kill people, why he wanted to kill the spiders. It, it made, it made... Wow. Basically. Yeah, he kept flip flopping, and it made no sense to me because when he was like, "I don't care," and then when he grabbed when he grabbed Peter, I was like, "Why are you fighting them? Like, it makes no sense. Like, they're trying they're trying to help." Um, but that's what I felt about Lizard and Sandman. Um, let's see. Okay, so we talked about Electro. Now let's talk about Green Goblin, Norman Osborn. Duh. We we haven't we haven't talked about him yet. What well, did you guys talked. think? Who wants to go first? Um, to you personally, I thought he looks awesome. Like looks awesome. Like when they gave him the the torn robes and the hood on top, plus his armor from the movie. I thought that was sick. I was like, this is freaking sick. And um, his personality, like with with the goblin, it wasn't me. It was the goblin thing. Like. It was it was crazy. I was almost like you didn't know whether to trust him or feel bad for him or, or what the entire time. And I liked that because it just kept me personally on the edge of my seat. And I, I like I think personally I couldn't be happier with how Goblin was in the movie. Yeah. 
it was it was crazy to have him back and just the dynamic that he got to play the Green Goblin as. It was like you have freaking Spider Man here, Tobey Maguire, Green Goblin, and then you have No Way Home, like forty levels above that, because he was just able just to dive head first into the rabbit hole essentially of what he could do. Well, and I'm gonna jump in. I personally think, and a lot of people are gonna hate me for it because I even. I was watching spoiler reviews the next couple days after we saw it, just trying to get people's opinions on it. And everyone is like on the opposite spectrum of, of, than I am. I guess I'm in the minority here, but I think that it was the goblin the entire time. And I feel like that's why he was so much better because he got to be the goblin for a longer period of time mm-hmm. instead of being half the movie Norman. than the last little bit as full on goblin, um, I personally think cause we, People are people will say, well, there's no way Norman was fighting. But I'm like, well, you got to remember, too, the goblin was acting like Norman before he tried to kill Peter. Mm-hmm. He was he that was all the in, in, in Spider-Man one before he says Godspeed Spider-Man. That was that wasn't Norman wasn't there. That wasn't Norman. Um, And so and it's not some Venom thing where. The goblin controls certain parts of Norman's body. No, he, it's 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 the brain. Um, yeah, with mm-hmm. the foe's case, it's literally split personality. In yes. the comics, uh, Norman is the goblin. There's no difference. Yeah, and that's what I like about this. So, um, especially too when Otto's like after, and we're gonna talk about Doc Ock getting cured, but after Otto is like, it's you, Norman. No more, no more darker half. It's just you. And he's staring at the stuff. He's like, yes, just me. And I'm like, see, like it, it was all the goblin the entire time. It wasn't me. The, 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 the I had nothing to do with it. Um, but that's where I was like, that was so because I, I also think too that he was scoping Peter and stuff. Like we'll have to go back and watch it another time. Like uh, like watch it again. But I feel like he was just scoping and researching Peter's movements just so because later he beats the ever living dog crap out of Peter. It was yeah. it was yeah. scary. It was legitimately It was a massacre. It was terrifying. Well, and on your point of feeling it was goblin the whole time, I, I have to kind of agree with you because yeah, it just one it comes out of nowhere, but like it it he didn't ha- I think a big reason why the whole the goblin thing and, and he I think we think he was so much better is because he we didn't have to worry about the build up of the origin story. He was goblin. Like he was already there. And I think that allowed him to, like you guys have said, really dig into the character and be the character that he wanted it to be. And with the Goblin versus Norman and all that stuff, I think it just came together perfectly. Mm-hmm. And we don't know when Defoe got pulled from his universe, but I think it has to be right after um, he puts in, uh, Toby's Aunt May in the hospital. Something like that, yeah, because like Willem Defoe, even in the even in the in the in the uh, the interview. He says the goblin's got a case to state this point. He, this time he's got a point to make. He's he's coming back with a reason. Um, and so when he, I I I I'm, maybe I'm stupid, but I and I was just watching it with rose tinted sunglasses. I don't know what that point he was making was that it was all his aunt's fault, or he just wasn't strong enough, or it was all his fault. I can't. Um, I for the life of me can't remember. Like I don't know what point he was making. That, that's just me. That's just me. I'll have to go back and watch it again. Yeah. It was just that that just being a good person is wrong or that no good deed goes unpunished. You can do all the good in the world, but you're still going to, you know, bad things are still going to happen and stuff like that. But that does push a really good, big motive. Now, mm-hmm. we have to talk about the three, the two people on Brady's thing. We can't not. <laughs> I will say, like, it, okay, so let me just go off on a little tangent, a little tangent. I've told Forrest this, too, and we'll, we'll actually do a video about this, but why in the world can't people just let surprises be surprises? Why does everybody want things spoiled for them? No, it's not funny. Why do people want things spoiled for them? We haven't seen Toby Maguire's Spider-Man since 2007. We haven't seen him as Peter Parker since 2007. When was the last, um... When was when did Tasm Two come out? I can't remember, but we haven't seen them in a very, very, very long time. Why can't like obviously we know they're gonna show up? 
Why do people want to post spoilers, post this, post that? Even even in an interview um, with with Willem Dafoe and all them, um, William, uh, Willem Dafoe said, I don't know how much of a spoiler territory this is. And the guy's like, please, we love spoilers. It's like, no, why would you want it spoiled? Why can't you just be naturally, why can't you have a surprise? Why don't you want it to be a surprise? I get that there's YouTubers in there who want to get the first clickbait story and want to get the first juicy scoop and all this and blah, 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 blah. But it's like, why can't people just go in with, with not with no expectations, because it's hard not to come into expectations with this, and I'll get into my expectations in a little bit. Um, but it's like, why can't you just have it come naturally? It would have meant more if I hadn't seen certain spoiler-ish stuff, if there wasn't, like, if people, like, it, it, it made me so happy to see him but also i was like what this would have been so amazing to people like obviously now yeah. we're getting back on track from afar seeing andrew's big buggy eye uh, eye lenses <laughs> that i love so much tasm 2 suit is the best spider-man suit next to the advanced yes. suit in spider-man um, ps4 but seeing those from afar i was like you already know it's him and what would have been weird is if he pulled off the mask and it was toby <laughs> like if somehow when they came over their suit switched um what takes beast but anyway no so what were your reactions brady okay because i haven't ta- i haven't talked to you about this at all no no this is when i lost it this is when the crowd went wild because for me personally the only thing that gave it away or potentially gave it away that the other two spider-men were going to be in it was what people were saying versus and maybe a couple of posters or something you know rumors i never officially saw anything i never saw any spoiler youtubes i never saw anything and if people came up to me i either forgot or i was like oh i guess we'll see and so for me i was Mm. totally blinded and with how they introduced the spiders the other two spiders toby and garfield um and the way they did it i wasn't expecting it because i started to give up hope because it was so far into the movie before they brought them in I was mm-hmm. like, oh, maybe it's maybe it's not gonna happen. And then all of a sudden they showed up, and that's when I, I like almost like I just had to like bite my finger because I would have like jumped up and screamed. Ah! But it was, like, <laughs> it was like everyone else pretty much did it for me. But I was stoked. I was ecstatic. And I'll, and I'll get to my favorite part about all three of them at, later on when I'm sure we're gonna hit that. Air time. Yeah, yeah. But yes, I loved it. I loved it. Forrest, what about you? Um, we talked about it on the way back from the movie theater, uh, but I'll rehash it if I can remember it, everything that I said. Um, I loved how they introduced him. Uh, I love how they saved Toby for last because he was the first big screen Spider-Man other than the one in, like, what, the 70s that appeared on TV? Yeah. Um, but like you, Taylor, the t- the Amazing Spider-Man 2 uh, costume was is my favorite. I think my new favorite is the one that Holland wears at the end. We'll mm-hmm. talk about that when we get there. Just because of how comic accurate, I love the big eyes on it. That's mm-hmm. my favorite part of any suit. That's my mm-hmm. favorite part to draw when I'm doodling Spider-Man. Yeah. Because um, you could have so much emotion in them. Um, but then you see Toby in there in the portal that Ned make. And I want to talk about Ned later on. And just how he's just in his civvies. He's in his civvies because he's been doing it for at least 30 years now, according to... What, how he looks, and he's just he knows when to buckle down, go undercover, and figure out what's going on. And then he's just like, Yeah, I'm, I'm Peter. And then their spider senses wit, wig off and they just shoot webs at each other. Yeah. And I, I did like, like, kind of going to on, on what you were saying about the whole being different thing. Like, Peter, I, there was, <laughs> okay. So the parts where the aunt was, or the grandma was like, Oh, can you get the cobweb? <laughs> I kind of, I kind of was like, ha ha, whatever. But the parts that like made me laugh so hard, if I, if it wasn't in person, like visually, I was, it was when she was, when Andrew came through and she got scared and she like did the wimpy throw of her purse. And then she like dramatically holds her (laughs) face and like screams and goes out of frame. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. And then when Toby comes in and she tries to flirt with him, (laughs) it's like, (laughs) <laughs> it was so well, funny I will say one thing that I noticed about Toby was it looks like he's almost wearing the same outfit that he uh, the other Peter is in um, 
the the multiverse with um uh Miles. Oh no, he's um, he's wearing he's three. wearing his suit. He's he's, wear, he, he's wearing his suit. No, I'm I'm saying not the not the suit, but the ja- the green jacket he comes where he comes in and stuff. Oh no, that's right. He is he is wearing his suit. Okay. That's oh, right. are you talking about like his his, his uh his like Civilian. streetwear, yeah, his like streetwear stuff? Thing where it's like the jeans and the green jacket with the the the, the uh, shirt. And it's it, funny oh, that oh, you say that. Funny. It's funny that you say that because with everything that went on later in the movie, how they talk about how they've all carried on, it's so funny because Forrest and I were talking. And we were seeing, at least I was seeing Toby as the Spider-Man who got killed by Kingpin, who was really mm-hmm. successful, who had a great marriage with Mary Jane and was, was you know, mm-hmm. then he died and he was, he was celebrated. Yeah, the, um, and then, album. and then, um, and then uh, Andrew's, to- the a- Andrew's, Andrew's the hobo Spider-Man. And he's just like, especially when, it, like when he's going off about the deep end, about how they all carried on, like, so... Let's 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 cut into it. No, sorry. Another funny thing was when Zendaya was throwing the bread at him. It's like I want to see if you had the tingle <laughs> yeah. thing. He's like, dude, but just not for bread. And then she's like, then she throws it again at him. And he's like, do it. And it was so funny. But we got to talk about Ned being magical. We got to talk about Ned. Yeah, I don't I feel like that. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Taylor. I feel like since they don't remember Peter, I wonder if that wiped their whole memory of what happened. If Ned doesn't remember where the sanctum is now. He doesn't remember that he did any of that stuff. Cause I feel like that would be a way for them to, uh, erase him being able to do that. That, that it was just a one time yeah. thing for this movie. It would have been, it, it think, would be cool to see Ned kind of do his own thing, but, but we don't need, we don't need it. No. So on that, I, I, that is to me a plot hole. Because the thing is that he they would forget Spider Man. They forget it Peter. Include Doctor Strange. They don't forget yeah, Spider Man. They, they just forget, forget Peter. Peter is, they yeah, forget who he is. is they forget who he is. Yeah, yeah. So that would to me wouldn't eliminate the Doctor Strange thing and the Sanctum thing and and stuff like that. But exactly. And and there's there it, it was heartbreaking when it's like you know like he he didn't say what he wanted to say to MJ. Like I'd be like. I'd be like, yo, before I dip out of here and you forget about me, let's make a selfie video so you can be like, hey, this is who I am. If you see me come up to you in the next however long, just know this is who I am. This is what I was. to Because here's the thing, too. You got to imagine them dating. They got to have pictures and stuff together. They yeah. got they got to They got to have texts. You know what I mean? Like, there's got to be something there that's going to remind her. But that's diving deep. That's like nitpicking, really. Like, I kind of just took this. Yeah at face value um because what i what i see them doing is kind of revamping him or um ret- not retconning but kind of having him start from scratch again making his own suit with fabric not having all the crazy gadgets like i like that but still technically happy at aunt may's grave says that he like knows of spider-man so technically spider-man could just access all the stark tech again um yeah but but Let's 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 get back into uh, the scenes where they go, where the Spider Men come and they actually um, Peter uh, Tom Holland, Spider uh, Peter One, um, where he, <laughs> where they actually talk to him about loss after Aunt May's been killed, um, dude. Oh my gosh, this was one of those parts. Like I I tear like I I legit I cried I cried. Forrest didn't see it, but I cried at one part. I, this. I don't cry. This this part this part made me tear up. Where a- every time Andrew was talking about Gwen, it it made Dude, me feel so bad for him. How he can turn it on and off, I have no idea. And just how he does it is so comic accurate too. How Peter actually feels about losing Gwen. Yeah. Um. What did you think about that, Brady? What did you think about when they were telling their stories and the whole? I don't cry. I never cry. So. Um, I was fine the whole time, and I cried my eyeballs out and filled the popcorn bucket. But <laughs> gosh, yeah, it, it was it was sad, and I but I think it was good because you know everyone does that. A lot of people do that when they deal with plots. They're like, no, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I'm going through. But you never know who actually has gone. And sure enough, of course, the spider 
the Spider-Men are going to have all known what loss is. Mm -hmm. And so I I thought that scene was super powerful in developing all their, all three of their relationships as, uh, as friends, as other spiders and, and really developing um, Tom as his character, because this is his first like loss from what I remember. This is his first like huge, huge loss other than Tony, obviously. Um, Yeah. Cause as far as we know, he doesn't have an uncle Ben. Yeah. He has yeah, an uncle. Yeah, we don't we don't know. He has an uncle Happy. Story of Uncle Ben. He almost had an uncle Happy. <laughs> uncle Sad now. Um, but yeah, I, I I personally liked that, and it, I think it was a strong move and development part of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was sorry. I was plugging back my pl- plug my computer back in because I forgot that I had it unplugged. Um, but <laughs> but, but anyway. Uh, let's move on to the lab scene. Uh, we're gonna. <laughs> uh, I don't remember a lot of it, but like when they finally address that <laughs> Toby's web is organic, and it comes out of him. <laughs> oh yeah! Like I like that they just like at every point in turn they they've sh- they shrugged it off. Like Toby's like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want. To, don't worry about it. You know. Um, but the one, the, the, but the part when Ned was like. Did you have a best friend? And Toby's like, yep. He died in my arms after he tried to kill me. And Andrew's like, dude, <laughs> like kind of like scolding Ned. <laughs> like it was, yeah. well, and that's the funny thing too, is that um, Andrew's best friend tried to kill him too. Harry tra- yeah. turned into the goblin, tried to kill him too. And essentially killed Gwen. Um, So that, that was, I, I want to watch that scene again. Cause that was a, a scene that I feel like I just missed a lot. And I was just like, mm-hmm. We have all three of them here. They're all doing science work, which was really, really cool. And kind of yes. going back to, it was so cool. And I, I forgot, I, I forgot to mention this. Going back, it was so cool to finally see Alfred Molina, uh, to see Norman Osborn and Otto Octavius interact. It was yeah. so cool to see them both doing science stuff together, to see them interacting. When Auk got cured, we got, we finally got to see pure Auk or, or Otto Octavius again, not Doc yeah. Auk. Like, they were, oh, dude, it was it, so heartwarming. I felt bad for him, so bad for him when he, they put the chip on him. He's like, it's so quiet now. I, I, there's no voices. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, it was so sad, but so relieving, too, because I was like, like, and then when, obviously, like, the, the it faked me out. I'll say it right now. When Electro, he's like, I liked you better before, and he zapped Otto. Um, Doc, Doc Ock keeps getting electrocuted in Spider-Man movies, and it makes me sad. Um, But I was yeah, like, oh, no. You don't deserve that. He's old. Yeah, I was like, oh man, um, but yeah, when they, finally seeing all the Spider Men back together doing science work, um, seeing you know the scientists back together doing their thing that was really really cool, and then them just kind of talking about Andrew being single and then kind of going back to the 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 rooftop scene where Andrew's like, I stopped pulling my punches, you know, like you went to a yeah. dark dark place. Um, <coughs> uh, what were you guys' thoughts on that when with uh? With uh, sorry, with um, to uh, Andrew saying that and and Tom being like, I don't care anymore, like he's where he's like, I don't care anymore. Like I'm gonna send him back. I'm gonna kill them all. I'm gonna like he doesn't care. It was definitely powerful because like I was like, oh man, we're about to see this young kid who's had this very young kid mentality of like he can make the world a better place. He is now the disgruntled grumpy angry at the world person and it's just like mm-hmm. a complete 180 from how he normally is and he's like uh, you just picture the the i stopped pulling punches but with tom and you're like oh man is this going to be one of those instances where who knows in like a future movie tom's gone dark side and they're either going to have to bring him in because he's being too violent or they're going to go out on a mission and he just beats the living crap out of someone they need information from stops holding back and then you know a whole situation like that it was like it's kind of depressing to see a kid who has so much optimism about being an avenger working with the Avengers, yeah. and doing being, all that stuff, superhero in general so, yeah yeah he was all he cared about was making the world a better place and then you see this complete this dark side of him and you're like that's oh. really sad and, and that's that, like that really depressing and that's the thing we they try to convey a lot in in movies where they're like, well, you turn the good guy to a bad guy, but we actually see it because we've seen his journey from a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed kid in Queens from his first appearance in Avengers to now. 
Like it from from then to that scene on the rooftop to when he was doing the vlogging stuff with the Avengers, two separate people, two separate yeah. people. Mm-hmm. Um, now let's go to the. Uh, um, oh, okay. So I wanted to touch on this, and I don't care what anybody says. I want to say this. Uh, they could have done a little better with so when they made the anti serum force, and I were talking about this. With the anti serum for uh for Norman, I think that it was personally for me. I think that he just made more of the Goblin formula. Goblin. It wasn't. Yep. It I wasn't. It, it wasn't an anti serum at all. Like he set them up knowing that hey they're gonna try to do this to me so I'm a I'm a just you know so I personally think what could have been cool, you had the perfect look for him. You had the perfect look. I know for saying go. this is a bit of a stretch. I don't care if Forrest thinks it's a bit of a stretch. It's not. They could have just given him that original makeup, the the moving makeup and stuff that he had that what was originally going to be his original mask. But and from what I've heard and saw, I don't know how true it is, but apparently that the the goblin makeup and stuff that he was going to wear, that was what he was supposed to see in the mirror and stuff in the scenes in Spider Man One. That was the goblin. Mm. So it was it wasn't just Willem Dafoe talking to Willem Dafoe. Um, but anyway, he could have, that could have injected him and then he could have had like green veins all up his neck and stuff like that. Done the scene just as Willem Dafoe go back, leave, and then come back and have that face on. I think that would have been so cool because I know a ton of people wanted that, wanted that makeup. And I guess Willem Dafoe wasn't comfortable in the makeup and, or they thought it was too scary or something like that. But <clears throat> I think it would have been really, really cool to have that. Um, that was my spiel. I have so much more I want to say about this scene, but <laughs> the construction site scene. Brady, what were your thoughts on it? Uh, how they the Statue of Liberty, right? The Statue of Liberty, yeah. How they, yeah. How they, um, just the banter between the three Spider Men. Okay, so if you want to talk about my all time favorite part, this was it. When they come together. After they can't figure out how to work as a team, they come together, have a little team meeting, and then they go run, jump off the scaffolding. To me, it reminded me of the Ninja Turtles. And they're all like shouting and screaming and laughing because they're all hyped. And then they swing and they land on the Statue of Liberty. I was like, yo, I'm done. This is all I needed to see. I'm out. Here's the popcorn, sir, ma'am. Here's my drink. Enjoy. I wanted to leave right then and there. That's all I needed to see. That was the dopest scene I have ever seen. And for me, Just that small portion alone is what rates it so high in the Marvel movies for Mm -hmm. me. Just that scene, the buildup of everything, them coming together, doing the big swing while cheering, and then landing on the Statue of Liberty. Okay, cool. We're here to screw you up now because now we're we're working as a team. Yeah. And I was like, that is so sick. That is so (laughs) sick. And I just like was like so happy right then and there. Um, I'll say my favorite part of that where I could have finished the movie. I don't know what, when they come back and they're talking about not being able to work as a team. It's right before your part where they're like, well, I thought you were Peter too, you know? And it's like, they're your, and then he's like, everyone shut up. Listen to Peter one. I know how to work as a team. I don't want to brag, but I will. I was in the Avengers and Toby's like the Avengers. That's so great. What is that? And I was like, dang it. Dang it. <laughs> dang it. <laughs> they faked us out thinking that we were going to have <laughs> Raimi verse Avengers. Dang it! <laughs> um, not that we were gonna have I it, but I've seen that somewhere but, else in a movie before, and it just makes me laugh. He's so like, "What much. is that?" And then, "What is that?" So he's like, "So and then." Tom point my favorite Andrew moment next to the one I'm about to talk to, you, and y'all know what it is. But where he's like, where Tom's like, "Peter one, Peter two points at Toby," and Andrew's like, "Peter three. You know, <laughs> like, like he's in agreement, and he's like, "Okay, what's the next?" Like, it. I don't know why, but that was probably like the funniest part to me in the entire movie. Next to Otto and them talking about. Um, the burritos that was i finally got the audio for that so so we're gonna do that anyway yeah um but their plan of you know curing them all one at a time and stuff like that was really really cool uh i love how it didn't go flawlessly still i really really like mm-hmm. that um but then <sighs> andrew saving mj oh yeah oh, that's yeah. where i cried where he's where he yeah. he catches her because I saw everybody on TikTok 
was like, imagine if Andrew saves her at that point, blah, 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 blah. And where he's like, are you okay? And she's like, yeah. And he like sees her and then he kind of, he, he gets choked up. It's like, dang it. Dang it. Dang it. But that part, that part freaking got me. Um, it's like, if only that he, hurt. like, cause he, he doesn't talk about exactly what happened. Cause he blames himself. Um, yeah. but anyway, what were your guys thoughts on that part on him saving her? Brady, you go ahead. I honestly think that you couldn't have asked for it to go better than exactly that. And I think if they had done just Tom saving her, I don't think it would have been nearly as powerful. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad that it went the way that it did. I don't think I personally would have changed that or asked for anything else. I think it you couldn't have asked for it to be any better. Yeah. I'm in, I agree with Brady. Like, yeah, I, I thought I was one of the people who thought, Oh, it, it shows uh, Tom Holland's hand in the trailer is grabbing for her. He's going to save her, obviously. Mm. No, I'm an idiot. Um, I'm just so happy that Andrew finally got his redemption. And he, it, I choked up at that part, too, man. Freaking, he, I know exactly what he was thinking. I think it all the time myself when I finally do something right. I didn't fuck up. I yeah. didn't do, I, I did it right for once. Yeah. Got a second chance. Yeah, you yeah. got a second chance. And, Kind of going back to that is where when Toby was telling Andrew, you're amazing, dude. Like, you're amazing. Like, you – and that's kind of like like where – because I saw that as, like, he was tell, basically telling Andrew, don't listen to the fans. You know, when, when he was getting the hate and stuff. To me, those movies were not good at all. He did really good as Spider-Man. I think he's a really great Spider-Man. Toby will always be my favorite Spider-Man slash Peter Parker. I feel like Toby was a better Peter Parker. Um, but that's not what I'm – I'm not getting into that debate. Because the last little bit here, and I'm trying to trying to wrap this up. Um, mm. The last little bit of what I wanted to talk about was them all getting cured. And I finally saw a video on it, Forrest, and they did reuse the scene, the shot of Flint Marco in the sewer. They reused oh, they that. Did. Yeah, they, they reused that. So you never see Thomas Hayden Church at all. I don't know if it was COVID things that kept him out of being able to actually do it, but... It was Thomas Hayden. Or just didn't agree to it. Well, he did. He did the voice. He was, it was Thomas Hayden Church. He just, you never actually physically saw his face, which kind of annoyed me because, like, a lot of people, like, Thomas Hayden Church is ugly and he doesn't have a good face and da da da. I'm like, he looked perfect as Flint Marco. He looked perfect as Sam. Um, I think maybe it was easier or cheaper to do, to do CGI. Cheaper just to have voiceover with CGI. Um, Brady, what happened? I'm back. Sorry. Had a low power mode for a second. Good. Oh, anyway. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll wrap this up real quick. So, uh, we'll, we'll round, wrap it up, but anyway, so let's talk about when the goblin comes back and he pulls a bamboozle. He grabs, the, he gets the freaking cube and he, and if you're watching this, we haven't talked about a lot of the plot stuff. This is spoilers. You should already know the plot by now. Um, but he <laughs> takes the cube and acts like he's trying to get away. Stri- like um peter thwips the uh the the glider doc awk we finally see how long his the the arm the t- arms that is freaky i don't like that i don't like how long <laughs> they went it was weird um but he doc awk grabs the uh after he helps cure electro when he comes back and that was cool mm-hmm. um but then goblin like acts like oh no you guys got me haha <laughs> you got the cube back and he puts a pumpkin bomb in and i love how many pumpkin bombs he used in this movie i love yeah. he's used so many i uh, love how it showed in the glider where the the pumpkin bombs are being kept and they just i guess pop out and just catches them and eats them everywhere yeah cuz we see that in we see that once in i think it's spider-man 3 cuz we see i think Harry, no, it was on Harry's board, wasn't it? That it shot up and he grabbed it. Yeah, it was on his yeah. board. So we didn't see that on, on um, we didn't see it on Norman's. Yeah, but how he and then he cuts Doc Ock's freaking tentacle. Force, how'd you feel there? How did you feel there? Let's let's let's. It, uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. <laughs> I, now I'm just sitting there. How the hell is he gonna replace that? <laughs> I, I did, and I, and and you saw that it physically hurt him too. Yeah. Um, I'm 100% convinced if um, Electro shocking Doc Ock tampered with the, the cure, the override chip again, they would not have won. 
Oh, the Spider Man. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. Um, yeah. So you know, all that happens. Andrew saves MJ. Spider Man or Tom, Pete, Tom's Peter, and Goblin have a final beatdown, and we see Goblin. And I had this look spoiled for me, which really, really sucked. But the full like armor Predator blade, Green Goblin, the tattered purple hood. Yeah, that was crazy, and that's the thing. What I'm saying is like if he went off to to go in to go in like armor up all of his freaking stuff, this is what I'm saying at the very least. Why didn't like we get to see him like re weld the helmet that he broke back together and put that on? That what that would have looked so sick. Mm-hmm. It would have looked or so the green cool. skin, even like you were saying. Well, even that, if not the helmet, because if even with the helmet, when when the beatdown happens that 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 Peter does to freaking he's beating the crap out of him if he would have punched so hard he breaks through the mask again you just see it shattering after each punch and you just see the foes bug eyes just popping out with his yeah wicked smile and he's getting the crap beat out of him over and over and over and kind of rewinding a little bit to where peter's like in a hurricanrana position at in the apartment on top of goblin and he keeps punching him in the face and he starts smiling and like like having a, the creepiest smile he's like ha you know like i was like whoa dude this is nuts, but anyway, five story power bomb. Yes, yes. Um, oh my gosh, that was so brutal. It was ridiculous. But then when Peter did that power bomb where he flipped and he grabbed like the belt, like, like the uh, and he flipped and he power bombed Defoe. Gosh, rest in peace, Defoe. After that, Jeez. um, the one thing I didn't like was that Defoe wasn't bleeding or anything like that. I get, I get it being that serum and stuff that it would probably help him. Um, but I just didn't like how he wasn't battered or because talk because Peter was beating the crap out of him. So it'd yeah, be nice yeah, to, at even least worse than Toby did. Exactly. Yeah. And so, and that we finally see him not pulling his punches anymore. Like it was, it was, mm-hmm. it was actually kind of scary. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, what did you guys think about that beat down by the way? Sorry. I'm, I'm um, going, uh, I found it really poetic at the very end of that fight when Holland grabs his glider and he's about to execute yeah. the foe, how Toby stopped him from doing the thing that the biggest thing that he regrets killing that mugger who we thought killed Ben, mm-hmm. how Toby was that guy for him. And then you, you heard me in the theater when Goblin stabbed him in the back. <laughs> yeah. You were pissed. I was like, Oh dude. And I told you, that's the one thing that I did not want to watch. I did not want to see Toby Maguire die yeah. right before my, right in front of my eyes. Uh, for me, like you said, it was scary to watch Tom Holland, and I honestly thought we were going to get the cliche: Tom gets given this advice, but he doesn't follow it, like we've seen in other movies where people get given that advice, they don't do it, but they do it anyway. I thought that was going to happen, and then I thought Tom was going to accidentally kill Toby initially when he when he's ah oh, like a freaking James Franco thing. Where he jumps yeah. in front of it and, so, and sacrifice. Oh yeah. my dude, I would have been so pissed. I, I would have left. That was gonna happen. I would have walked dude, out I too. Straight up, I was like, no, 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 no. And then he stops it and he grabs it. And uh, I, I don't know. There were so many moments where I still thought Tom Holland was either gonna get that other Spider-Man out of the way and still stab him or what. And then when he did stop him and he was taking so long to talk to him, I was like. What is Goblin doing right now? Like, <laughs> if Goblin's going to do anything, this is it. This is where you get your stab in, literally. It's, it and stabs and, him. And then when he did, yeah, and I, when he did, I was like, wait, I didn't mean it. Like, oh, <laughs> I, I didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought it was going to be, once again, that Toby dies. And I was like, no. Like, yeah, and, 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 and too, like, I like, like, they faked us out making him think he was going to die. Then Andrew's like, you okay? He's like, yeah, I've been stabbed before. Like, he, I was like, so yeah. much pain, aren't you? And he's like, so much pain. So much pain. And I, I just, I just got to say, the picture of all of them hugging, but especially the one of Andrew and to- Andrew, Toby with his arm around Andrew, that, dude, that is, pro- that is my favorite shot in any Marvel movie yeah. ever. That is, I feel like it's a statement too. Like it's a statement, like kind of like the situation with Star Wars, right? People think that the different sets are are better than the other. Yeah. That right there was saying, look, all Spider Men get along. All Spider Men think they're badass. No one Spider Man is better than the other. 
Exactly. That right there was like a statement that not one's not better than the other. Exactly. Yeah. And and I, I really like that. I really like, like, Andrew got his... Re- I don't think he even needed redemption for his movies. He didn't do a bad job. He really didn't. No, I don't. Um, well, it's I not like redemption it. for his movie. It's redemption for not saving Gwen. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of people are saying but, that redemption for his movies. Like, like a oh. Hayden Christensen type of thing. You know what I mean? And it's like, no, yeah, no like one hated... Like, like, I don't... I Garfield. Nobody hated Andrew Garfield. Like, my goodness. Go back... And in my cosplay videos and stuff like that, you'll see that I was using the TASM 2 mask. Like, I put ample money into that. Um, but it's like, it, he didn't get any sort of redemption of his character and his his his, his portrayal because he did an amazing job um, mm-hmm. with what he was given. They Like, obviously. But anyway... Um, we're, we're 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 not talking about a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of stuff like with the plot of the cube, what it was all about, Doctor Strange versus Spider Man's fight. I do want to talk about Spider Man outsmarting Doctor Strange though. Yeah, I, that was not cool. not a lot of people that are talking cool. about that. I thought that was really really cool. Um, that's geometry. You're good at geometry. You like geometry. Like, yeah, like I was like, well, okay, okay, that was really cool. Um, and I like how these older Avengers. They're not Billy badasses. Like they're not, mm-hmm. they're not like, I don't care who it was. Like to me, Captain America always had a plan of how he was going to win up until Thanos yeah. punched him in the jar. Um, <laughs> but so no one outsmarted like- Captain America. No one outsmarted, you know? So seeing you actually see his brilliance, you actually see that there. Well, and it's like, yeah, you and I have talked about this a lot, Taylor. We like to see a hero who has some weaknesses because no no person is perfect. Yeah. They're not mm-hmm. unstoppable. And so when we see characters who do lose and they forget about a step or, or they get caught off guard, they're not perfect, they're not invincible, it carries further than um, if they're if they're invincible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it just shows spider-man how he actually is in the comics he tries to go in with the plan but everything goes sideways and he has to improvise a lot of it mm-hmm. and it it is it, it it's good to see now let's 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 move to the diner scene i told <laughs> forrest the, the old guy mj was talking to him like that was supposed to be stanley <sighs> that old guy mj was talking to that was supposed to be stanley yep like that, they could have CG'd Stan Lee there. I don't care. It could have looked like t- crap, and I would have because that was the one movie that Stan Lee needed to have a cameo in. Um, yeah, obviously. Yeah, even if it was just a sign on the wall that said "Previous Owner, Rest in Peace," that would have been. That would have been or fine. even a picture of him being the Employee of the Month or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, like not Previous yeah. Owner, Rest in Peace. Like, geez, Forrest, good gosh. That's morbid. You know what? Just for that statement, I'm giving this. I'm giving this movie. I'm taking another point away from this movie. Just for that. Oh. (laughs) Another spot for Stan could have been the the landlord at the end. Yeah, they could have. You bring back Mr. Dinkovich. God damn it! That's what I was expecting. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I was waiting for. Like just his voice. (laughs) Gosh. But yeah, the landlord or something like that. Make sure your rent's on time, you punk. Um, but something like that, but, uh, then him going to the grave of Aunt May and stuff like that. I feel like maybe that was a point where he could have said, I'm her, ne- I'm, I'm her nephew, but yeah, where he's like, you know, uh, he knew her from feast or whatever it was or whatever he said it was. Um, yeah, he said feast or no, no. Didn't he say through Spider-Man or something? No, yeah, through Spider-Man. Yeah, I thought he said through Spider-Man. Yeah, um, but he could have said okay. something else. Uh, I feel like that was the time to be like, hey, this is who... I, I don't know. I know I like what they're doing here. Um, but then we see him make his new suit. Or with his new... And I'm so stoked for it. I'm so stoked. I hope we get another Spider-Man soon. Now... Let's quick. We'll we'll finish. We'll finish what we got to say, um, and then we'll get to the the news and stuff like that. But, uh, end credit scenes. <laughs> Who wants to go first? I know that you were upset. 
I, say no, what you got. Say, say what that you, is lightly putting don't, it, Taylor or Brady. I was there. I was there five thousand years ago. <laughs> he he was there when the texts were written. <laughs> Do you want to go or do you want me to go? You go first. You can go, Brady. You go first. Personally, I was somewhat disappointed, yes, because there were a few moments through the Statue of Liberty (laughs) scene. The Statue of Liberty scene, I was thinking that Venom was going to come back and just somehow help them. Mm -hmm. Uh, But he didn't, and then the end credit scene happened. Yes, I am disappointed that he went back, but I'm interested to see what happens with this piece of symbiote he left behind. So I didn't completely hate it because we saw it. We got some of it. We had a little nibble. And now that gives them the opportunity to give us the feast. They gave us the appetizer. Now we're just waiting for the, the for the actual tray. For, and for now at meal. that point, I'm done. I'm scared. <laughs> Go ahead, Forrest. Go ahead. Um, I enjoyed most of the end credit scenes, except for the, except for the Venom one. I mean, because the little, little driplet of symbiote should have disappeared with them. It shouldn't have stayed. It should have buggered off. It just, it don't make sense to me how it stayed. Um, the Doctor Strange stuff, I, I, I'm stoked for, because, well, it's, I like Doctor Strange. That's all I have to say about that. I am also excited for the Doctor Strange stuff. These monkey-loving sons of mother lovers who think that they can just do this to me? Why do they think that I I legitimately I'm telling for I told Force in the theater that I am taking a point, a freaking point away from this movie just because of those two scenes. Okay, so Venom, Venom is going to just they're just going to tickle us with it. They're going to tickle us with it and bring Venom in and be like, "Oh, hey, look. Oh, you guys had the end credit scene. He literally came back just to be another end credit scene." That's all he did. That's all he freaking did. And then they, he just draws the symbiote off. Now I'll get back into I'll get back into the symbiote thing because apparently there's some rumors and stuff going on, blah, 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 blah. But freaking, they do that and they just have him come in to be drunk and then have him go away and just leave a little, a little turd of symbiote. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you absolutely freaking kidding me right now? And then, oh, the Doctor Strange stuff pissed me off so bad. I don't care about Doctor Strange, especially with what happened in Hawkeye. Now, spoilers. Spoilers, if you haven't watched Hawkeye by now, I was able to watch it in an entire evening. It's your fault if you haven't watched it, especially you. Anyway, you, Brady. Anyway, Kingpin is in Hawkeye. He showed up. Yeah. Daredevil. Wait, the same Kingpin? The same Kingpin. I'm sorry I spoiled that for you. But this is where they've thrown me to. They get Daredevil in Spider-Man. Kingpin in Hawkeye. Where's my Punisher? Where is he? They, there was so much chatter and stuff around everyone. Charlie Cox saying, oh, well, John Bernthal is the only person who can play Punisher in the MCU. John Bernthal is the only this. John Bernthal is the only that. John Bernthal was playing the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield freaking gosh dang Thing that they were doing, like, oh, no comment, no comment, da 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 I'm not showing up in the MCU. They could have given him something at the Statue of Liberty. Like I told you guys, where literally it's just the Statue of Liberty rubble, there's construction crew cleaning it up, and you just see it pans on the ground, showing all the rubble. You see combat boots, it pans up. It's John Bernthal. He kind of looks around, sniffs, walks, boom. Or they could have done one in place of the in place of the Eddie one, because I feel like the, uh, the, the Doctor Strange one was necessary. Because that's the next big thing coming up. Yeah. I feel like the Doctor Strange one was necessary. But in place of um in place of the stupid symbiote one. <sighs> oh gosh. In place of the stupid symbiote one, it could have been Peter walking around downtown. He bumps into someone, either a man, a boy or a girl. They drop some groceries. Hey, where are you taking all this stuff? Oh, I'm just taking it to feast. Oh, cool. Like I use I, you know, my my aunt used to, you know, be heavily inv- involved with that. Da, 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 da. Hey, what's your name? I'm Peter. What's your name? Miles. Or I'm Peter. What's your name? Gwen. 
They could have done something like that. Maybe that's stupid. That would be a hundred times better than getting a turd of symbiote in Mexico. Like my gosh, wherever they were. I think they went to Mexico. Anyway, with that said, it's rumored that Andrew Garfield's going to get a third movie. And since he said he wanted to fight an alien, that somehow that symbiote is actually in Andrew's world or he's going back and Tom Hardy, his venom is going to fight Eddie or Andrew Garfield and Andrew Garfield's going to get symbiote or something like that. It's rumored that that's what's happening or that little nugget of symbiote is somehow going to end up in Andrew's um, universe. But either way, I would love to see Andrew's um, Spider-Man versus Tom Hardy's um, Venom. <sighs> now. Now you, you go take your blood pressure medication. I need to. Gosh. Hold on. Where's. Where's. Oh, I don't have any left. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> let's that get. That makes it worse. Let's. <laughs> Let's get to end. Let's get to final ratings out of 10. What do you give it Forrest? A 10. I felt like a little kid watching Toby McGuire for the first time in my room with my VHS and my toys. I, I could watch it anytime and not be disappointed. Brady, what about you? 10, 15 if possible, but 10, absolutely 10. Loved it. Hyped the entire time. Never not a shitty grin on my face the entire movie. So. Was, it was worth the hype. It was worth the hype in the wait. Oh, it was worth, worth the hype. All the hype. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Gosh. For me, just because of the end credit scene, I'm taking it down. I, I, I took it down a whole point in the theater. Dude, I got up, Forrest saw I was like, done. I was like, Dude, done. He did the Peter Griffin thing. Done. He just fucking walked out. He threw his popcorn and everything. I, well, I dropped it. I accidentally dropped my my drink. Um, oh, because uh, I gave you my popcorn. But anyway, I give it a nine point five. I would okay. drop it down to a nine, but I'm excited for the kingpin stuff and the daredevils in there. I'm happy with what we got. I feel greedy asking for more, but they could have done more. Um. Because they should and they need to bring Punisher into the MCU because they brought Daredevil into the MCU and Daredevil brought or er, brought Punisher and Punisher people like Punisher and 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 Daredevil, the TV shows, more than they like Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, or Iron Fist. So I it would only make sense for Punisher to be the next guy, but I understand how it'd be hard to bring him in because I don't want to see Punisher go PG. I don't want it like I don't want to see him go yeah. get neutered. You know what I mean? But yeah. So that is our discussion, our review of Spider-Man No Way Home. My gosh, I got some announcements for the next one. It will more than likely be the first episode of Book of Boba Fett. Thank you to Brady Forrest for coming in. That'll do it. Someone want to do the outro for me. I'm dead. <laughs> we will see you guys on the next one. Oh, gosh. <laughs>